and a suitcase is now published in over 40 countries around the world and it has won many awards including every children's choice award in canada the canadian library association book of the year the national jewish book award in the u.s the unicef award at the rome children's festival reaching over three generations in three continents hannah's suitcase connects a young jewish girl who's killed at auschwitz a japanese curator determined to share her story and hannah's brother who lived in canada Ms. Levine's work reflects a lifetime commitment to issues of social justice. In recognition of this, she won, uh, has won the Florence Byrd Award to honor women working in communications who increase public awareness of women's rights as human rights. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Levine. It is a great honor to be here tonight um, in this center named for Robert Jackson, who played such a huge role in defining um, our modern understanding of crime and punishment and human rights and justice and accountability. Uh, it's also an honor to be here with Annalise Salomon, who you're going to hear from in just a couple of minutes, um, who dedicates herself now to sharing the lessons of history with young people. And it's especially thrilling to be here with the essay contest winners who come from all over to be recognized for their contribution to new thinking about racism and its dangers and about the importance of history in all our lives. Uh, each one of us in this room has probably done some tough thinking about history and decided to do something with it through talking, thinking, acting, and writing. My own fascination with the subject of the Holocaust began when I was about the age of the essay writers. Um, when I was growing up in the 60s, uh, the Holocaust was very rarely spoken of. Uh, it certainly wasn't taught in school. Um, there were no books written uh, for children. Uh, but a chance encounter I had with a Holocaust survivor in an Ottawa delicatessen and then a trip to the museum at the concentration camp Buchenwald when I was 13 ignited what turned out to be a lifelong interest for me in this subject. I started reading voraciously anything I could get my hands on uh, when I was 13 and all these years later, that's many years later, um, I'm still reading. I used to worry, actually, um, at various points in my life, that I was obsessed. Um, was there something wrong with me, I wondered, um, that I couldn't see enough, hear enough, read enough, and know enough about this horrible um, period in history. I was drawn to it for many reasons. Um, I wanted to understand, and I'm still trying to understand uh, how such a terrible thing could have been allowed to happen by the world. I wanted to understand how survivors like Annalise could even put one foot in front of the other um, after living through what they lived through. And of course because I'm Jewish I always knew that if I had been born in a different time or place that that easily could have been me or my mom or my dad or my sister uh, living through that experience or more likely actually dying in it. I was also full of questions and I'm still full of questions. Um, how do human beings become murderous racists? How do seemingly civilized countries uh, and peoples turn into killing machines? What about the people who stayed good and decent? What gave them the courage to fight back against tyranny, to hide a terrified neighbor, or to join the resistance? Would I have had the guts to join the resistance? How should the world punish what we now know as crimes against humanity? And of course, how can we make sure it never happens again? And said, Truth is that the modern stories of Rwanda and Darfur uh, remind us very well that the world hasn't figured it out yet. 
and history is very much alive uh, among us. The overwhelming international response to my own book, um, Hannah's Suitcase, tells me that both kids and adults are hungry to connect with living history. We have both an obligation and an opportunity, I think, to listen to the experiences of survivors like Annalise and to learn from them and to figure out afterward what each one of us can do with actions large and small um, to build a different kind of world. A tiny group of Japanese children um, was at the center of launching the search for the story of Hannah Brady, uh, who was an inmate at Theresienstadt uh, for more than two years and murdered, as you heard and know, at Auschwitz at the age of 13. When these kids learned Hannah's story, they wrote a poem, and in it they made a promise. And just a little piece of that poem reads, We small wings will tell every child in Japan what happened to Hannah. We small wings will never forget what happened to one and a half million Jewish children. We children can make a difference in building peace in the world so that the Holocaust will never happen again. Imagine how different the world could have been and how different it could be if kids everywhere said no to racism and intolerance. The kids who wrote these essays and won these prizes um, who we're celebrating tonight and the people who put this contest together are doing just that. And in a way, there can be no greater honor to people like Robert Jackson, or I would bet to people like Annalisa Solomon.